The question will be, I mean, for me, the issues will be if the people of Adamawa State have borne this for eight year, for seven years, yes. uh, our accountant, mm. it, it also means that the politicians are culpable because it's not possible that one person will be at the helm of something, nothing is working for seven years, and politicians like him have been quiet, doing nothing about it until now when he's changed parties. No, no, we've never been quiet at all. We've always been shouted. Actually, we shouted above over the, uh, the rooftop, but people didn't want to hear us. The leadership at the top didn't want to hear us. They thought maybe we were just rubble rousers, that we just wanted to uh, oppose the governor. And uh, some political calculations were also made. But now that the governor is out and the issues and the things we used to say of the governor, they have now come to the light then. And, and also there is now varying political uh, uh, differences between the governor and the powers in Abuja. Now we are being listened to. Now, we will not say that, why are you listening to us now? We always wanted to be listened to. So we are, we are grateful that we are being listened to. At least we have been given a, a platform to, uh, to, to vent this thing. And members of the House of Assembly have also, uh, we have discussed this thing with the members individually, collectively, in private and in public. But like I said, because the powers that be did not want things done, you know, uh, the way we, they ought to be done. So nobody, nobody listened to us, but it's not because we did not try. Adam said we have tried. And you can remember that it is only in Adam said that we were able to, the ordinary members of the PDP in my state were able to seize the party away from the governor. And then we made it clear to the governor, you either play along the line of the party constitution or you find elsewhere. So when the governor realized that he wasn't going to play according to the party constitution, he then found himself out. He went first to the new PDP and then now to APC. So it's all okay for us because we know that the fight that we've been fighting for six, seven years is now getting uh, some fruitful results. Let me ask this one. Uh, James says, if the governor of Adamawa failed for seven years, why did he re-elect him three years ago? Well, uh, we, we elected him seven years, three years ago on the, uh, well, the, the appeal of the president. You see, we made it very clear to the president that we didn't want the governor. The, the party national secretariat stated that all PDP governors were to return to office in, an, in, the, in, the, uh, in the hope of them also supporting the candidacy of the president. I objected to that. I stated to them that states should be taken on their own peculiarities. Governors, individual governors, should be taken on their own merits or demerits. And I argued that Adamawa State, in Adamawa State, we didn't need to go uh, that way. But they said, just go and do uh, this thing. And the president called us all in the, in the villa and then told us that, Look, because of the PDP family, because of this, because of that, we understand your situation, but go ahead and do it. The president said, when I raised the issue, the president said, well, Dr. Omar, you should go and uh, maybe if you are not going to support him, get a room somewhere and sleep until the elections are over. And that was exactly what I did. I just took a flight and went to Dakar, got the hotel in Dakar, and waited in Dakar until they announced that the, the governor has been re-elected. Then I came back and continued my case against the governor's election in court. So we didn't you know, accept impunity. We fought against impunity, but you continue fighting against impunity until such a time that you get it. The, when uh, Mandela and all the NNC people have been fighting uh, apartheid, they've been fighting it for years, but they didn't succeed until probably after 60 or so years of apartheid before at the end of the day it happened. So it is not because the NNC people uh, supported a, a apartheid. They didn't, but they couldn't just remove it at the time that they wanted to remove it. So it was with us in other states. But if he is impeached now, uh, alongside his deputy, will the people be happy? Will they have development in less than, what, how many years before the next elections? What would that achieve? Well, I think the issue of his impeachment is not about if, it's when. Oh, really? In spite yeah. of all that, it's as good as, as certain as... As good as done, definitely. Why? Because 
they were given impeachment notices. By the provision of the constitution, they had uh, uh, 14 days from the day that the impeachment notice was passed in the House, which was on the 18th, no, actually. If the impeachment notice is passed, is it not different from them being served? No, no, you see, the provision of the constitution says that in the proceedings and determination, so the, the announcement of the impeachment on the, house of the, in the, on the floor of the House is the beginning of the process. The serving of the impeachment to the governor and the deputy governor is part of the proceedings of the process. So the constitution says no court should uh, intervene. And now the, their time is up. Now uh, uh, they, they ought to have returned, they, they have answered all the charges and returned it to the House of Assembly. And then the House of Assembly will look at these, their answers vis-a-vis -vis the charges. If the House was satisfied that yeah, they have answered is okay, we agree. So the, the process ends. But if the House is not satisfied, then the House will take the next step and then ask the Chief Judge of the State to set up a serving man panel. They did not respond. Therefore, there was nothing the House would look at to say whether it, they are satisfied or not. So the charges remain, and that was why the House two days ago called on the Acting Chief Judge of the State to set up the serving man panel. We are waiting to, announce, to hear the announcement of the serving man panel. Now, when the serving man panel comes, they will only look at the charges because they did not respond to those charges. I saw on the papers the deputy governor, day before, I think yesterday, he made an appeal to the president in an open letter. He said to the president, and uh, he said that he answered these charges in a press conference. Well, the deputy governor should know better than that. He is a lawyer. If you are given a charge, you don't go call press conference and respond to those charges. You should re to respond to those charges to those who, who charge you. So he failed to do what he ought to do, and then went and... Uh, but why aren't the charges sentiment. given in the papers? Pardon? Why aren't the charges published in the papers? The charges were published in the papers because both the governor and the deputy governor made it impossible for the uh, clerk to, to see them. So why is it, diff why is it you know, offensive that he's answering them back through the press? No, no, no. The, 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 the House of Assembly passed a resolution in the House ordering for substituted service. It's just for him to see those charges and then respond. So it is not for him to see those charges and then respond on the newspapers. No, he ought to respond to the, to the, to the House that charge him. It is not the press that charge him. All right. Uh, we have to thank you for coming on. Uh, Dr. Omar Addo is a former PDP governorship aspirant and the Executive Secretary Center for Alternative Policy Perspectives and Strategy. We've been talking about the developments with uh, Adama in Adamawa State. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you, Chamberlain. We'll be back after this break. Join us again.